In the 2011 movie Captain America The First Avenger, the moment they realize that Steve Rogers has the makings of a superhero is when he jumps on a dummy grenade to save his comrades. To sacrifice yourself for your fellow soldiers in a combat situation is one of the most honorable things a military serviceman can do, even earning you the coveted Medal of Honor, an award given for exceptional feats of bravery and personal sacrifice. Only 103 Medal of Honor recipients are alive today. Jumping on a live grenade will probably net you a Medal of Honor, but it's also a pretty surefire way to die in action. So imagine the kind of person it takes to do this at the age of 17 with two grenades, miraculously survive, and then go on to defy death once again. That person is who we're talking about today on this episode of the Infographics Show. This is the story of a war hero and an almost indestructible man, Jacqueline H. Lucas, aka Mr. Immortal. Jacqueline, who more commonly went by Jack, was born on Valentine's Day in 1928. These were truly humble beginnings, growing up in the town of Plymouth, North Carolina along the Roanoke River. Growing up with the more traditionally feminine name, Jacqueline, Jack learned to be extra tough to compensate, enhancing his natural athletic abilities from a young age and learning to beat up anyone who made fun of him. However, in spite of his drive and toughness, life didn't always come easy to young Jack. When he was 11 years old, his father, local tobacco farmer Lewis Harold Lucas, died tragically at the young age of 45. Jack loved his father and so took his death particularly hard. Like a lot of adolescents struggling with feelings of grief, Jack began to misbehave and act out. His mother, who never remarried despite living to the truly impressive age of 96, was still grieving herself in the aftermath of her husband's death. Feeling like she was unable to control young Jack, she enrolled him at the Edwards Military Institute in the local town of Salemburg. For a lot of people, being abruptly enrolled into a military school after your father's untimely death would be a nightmare. For Jack, however, it was when he really came into his own. As we mentioned before, Jack was a naturally big and athletic kid. By age 14, while most people his age are still in braces, Jack was 5'8 and 180 pounds of solid muscle. In the regimented macho environment of military school, Jack put his physical aptitude to the test and excelled in an insane variety of sports. These included hunting, trap and skeet shooting, horseback riding, wrestling, boxing, basketball, softball, and the American pastime, baseball. He quickly rose through the ranks at Edwards Military Institute, gaining the rank of cadet captain. During his time there, he even earned the coveted position of captain of the football team. If everything kept progressing in this direction, it's very likely Jack would have left the institute and became a superstar athlete. However, wider circumstances unfolding across the globe dramatically changed the course of Jack's life. Europe was experiencing what would later be known as World War II, as Hitler's expansionist Nazi forces, with the help of Mussolini's fascist Italian regime, wreaked havoc on neighboring countries. The United States under President Franklin Roosevelt had vowed to stay out of this messy European conflict. However, everything changed for the US and for Jack Lucas on December 7, 1941. Pearl Harbor the surprise bombing and kamikaze attack by the Japanese military on an American naval base in Honolulu, Hawaii that left over 2,300 American soldiers dead. This event sparked uproar across the nation, but it particularly resonated with young Jack Lucas. At 14, he was still three years below the legal enlistment age, and he didn't have his mother's permission, but that didn't matter to him. He was feeling that same rage and grief he felt after his father's death, but this time, there was an enemy to fight and you better believe that Jack Lucas was going to join that fight. But there were still those two pesky issues of his age and his lack of parental permission. However, Jack had his own methods for getting around this. Namely, in August of 1942, he broke out of military school, where they declared him AWOL, and crossed the state line to Virginia. There, he bribed a public official to forge a document saying he was 17. His next stop was the Marine Corps Recruitment Center in Norfolk, Virginia. There, he forged his mother's signature and fully enlisted in the United States military. All before the age of 15, when most of us are too afraid to ask our crushes to prom. He was sent for recruitment training at the Paris Island Marine Corps Training Depot in South Carolina. Much like his time in military school, Jack excelled in his training. His years of hunting, trap, and skeet shooting in Edwards Military Institute had paid off as he was declared a sharpshooter in rifle qualification. He was a full-fledged Marine by age 14. Jack was already eager to jump straight into the action, but the US military had different ideas. They gave him a post in the Paris Island Training Battalion, doing largely manual labor for them. It was a far cry from the action Jack was expecting when he enlisted. 
Luckily for him, Jack had never been the kind of guy to just sit around and complain. Instead, much like his days in military school, Jack abandoned his post to follow more exciting prospects. Namely, he got a ride to the military base at Pearl Harbor, telling a USMC officer that his assignment to the training battalion was the result of a clerical error and that he was supposed to have been given a more active combat position. However, this clever plan didn't quite work out because he was given a military trucking job. Driving supplies from place to place didn't exactly make him feel like a valuable soldier. Over time, the frustration of inaction was starting to drive Jack a little stir-crazy. Once again, he began acting out, like any teenager who feels he's being treated unfairly. Jack was disciplined by his superiors for once again going AWOL, this time to head into Honolulu proper and meet girls. He was also arrested for getting hammered and instigating a bar fight. In one instance that feels like something straight out of Animal House, Jack was reprimanded for bringing a crate of beer into his barracks. Jack responded in the only way he could, punching the military policeman who reprimanded him square in the jaw. He was court-martialed and spent five brutal months in the stockade. Unluckily for his superiors, five months of eating bread and breaking rocks did nothing to dull his rebellious warrior spirit. Getting tired of causing trouble in Hawaii, Jack figured that if the military wouldn't deploy him in combat, he'd just deploy himself. A short trip down to the local docks later, Jack had become a stowaway on board the USS Duell, a transport ship bound for the front lines out in the Pacific. Being a natural-born survivor, Jack was able to remain hidden from the crew for a solid month during the journey. He survived off of scraps, motivated by knowing that in a matter of weeks and then days, he'd be able to join the heat of the battle. And soon enough, Jack got his wish. His time to truly shine came on February 20th, 1945, just less than a week after his birthday. He was a private in the 1st Battalion, 26th Marines, 5th Marine Division. While the other soldiers were armed with M1 Grand Rifles, Jack, who wasn't even meant to be there, was going in with bare hands. When the bullets started flying and his comrades started dropping around him, Jack grabbed a rifle of one of the dead soldiers and charged into the fray. Nothing would stand in his way. Jack ran across the beach, which was being torn up by machine gun fire and artillery. He didn't care. Eventually, he hit the tree line and he teamed up with a group of four other surviving soldiers. They grouped together and pushed deeper into the jungle, preparing to take on the Japanese forces embedded in machine gun dugouts and complex military tunnel networks. Jack and the four soldiers launched an attack on a heavily fortified Japanese machine gun nest, but upon actually reaching the nest, they found it empty. This was because the 11 Japanese soldiers manning the nest had already escaped through one of the tunnels and were climbing out of the ground behind them. Jack and his new comrades whipped around and opened fire. Jack's first shot tore through the head of a Japanese combatant, killing him instantly. Great start. Then his second shot jammed. Not so great. Shots were exchanged in a brief but intense firefight until a live Type 97 fragmentation grenade landed at Jack's feet. Without a second's hesitation, Jack threw his body down onto the grenade and yelled for his comrades to take cover. A second grenade landed near him before the first one had even had a chance to explode. He immediately grabbed that one too and held it against his chest. Then, one of the grenades exploded, releasing not only the blast force, but the deadly shrapnel directly into his body. Luckily for him and his team, the second grenade didn't explode. His surviving Marine comrades, inspired by Jack's act of great courage and heroism, managed to fight off the Japanese soldiers and turn the tide of the fight. Afterwards, they were shocked to find that Jack was both alive and conscious, something that seemed utterly impossible at the time. Well, impossible if you aren't Jack Lucas, a man who later earned the incredible nicknames Mr. Immortal and the Indestructible Man for his death-defying feats. Navy corpsmen ran to the rescue, grabbing Jack and taking him back to their hospital ship on a stretcher. On the way, they had to repel relentless Japanese bonsai attacks with their trusty 45 pistols, but they were able to get him back safely. There, Jack had to receive 21 life-saving surgeries, where they removed over 250 pieces of shrapnel from his body. It pierced every single major organ in young Jack's body, but against all odds, he made a full recovery as well as successfully saving his four fellow soldiers. Not bad for his first time on the battlefield. Seven months later, he became one of the handful of people to collect his own Medal of Honor, alive and in person. It was given to him by President Harry S. Truman at age 17, making him the youngest recipient of the Medal of Honor in American history. Having gotten the rage-fueled adrenaline out of his system, Jack returned home to complete his schooling. He'd be the only ninth grader in the US with extensive war wounds and a Congressional Medal. Even in civilian life, Jack Lucas never had a dull moment. He got a college degree, went on a speaking tour, and appropriately for a man whose birthday was on Valentine's Day, he got married three times. Including, according to his autobiography appropriately named Indestructible, one who hired a hitman in an attempt to kill him. 
said Hitman was unable to finish what the Japanese grenades started. But Jack's days of service and insane death-defying luck weren't over. To get over his fear of heights, like a truly crazed individual, he joined the 82nd Airborne at the age of 40 as a paratrooper. However, during one of his training jumps, tragedy struck and his parachute didn't open. He fell 3,500 feet and for anyone else, this would be a certain death sentence. They'd be cleaned out of cracks in the sidewalk with a toothbrush. But Jack, who seemed to be an action movie protagonist in the flesh, saved himself by falling into a commando role. He got up and walked away unscathed. By the time his work with the 82nd Airborne was over, he'd achieved the rank of captain for the third and final time in his life. After finally and fully returning to civilian life, Jack sold beer in Washington for a living. He got to meet with presidents up until the end of President Clinton's time in office and also finally got to experience some well-earned rest and relaxation. He passed away in 2008 at the ripe old age of 80 from cancer. That's a heck of a lot longer than most people who get blown up by grenades and fall out of planes without a parachute, but Jacqueline H. Lucas was never most people. You'll probably never have to jump on a grenade. But how about you jump into another one of our videos about legendary war heroes? Check out Mad Jack, a real World War II madman and the insanely crazy story of a tiny soldier. It won't open your parachute, but it will open your mind.